A lot of comments on my TikTok asking how you do the voices. So mm -hmm. I wanted to address that in a video um, here that we're making for YouTube. I'm bringing my good friend Bob around because he is the one that helps me with all my voices. He's got, um, he's been doing the voices forever and uh, he has uh, great influence <laughs> on the way I do. Bob, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, hi, I'm Bob Rumba. All right, so what are we starting off with today? Are we doing warm up with for voices, or what are we? We're so, just go, yeah, going so right into it. I want to go with this, like, um, because our a lot of my, our audience here that's watching this are new. They're new to ventriloquism, um, so they've got maybe a sock as a puppet or some something that they bought for you know thirty bucks online, and uh, they're like, how do I create a voice for it? Where? Where do you start? Where do you begin? Do you start with warm ups or, or are there something <clears throat> later? I, I personally like to start with the warm ups and it helps people know um, how it um, opens their voice up so they can know what they should get out of it. Everybody can do at least one other voice besides their own voice. So, wait, did you say everybody? Yeah. Okay. Everybody can do at least one other voice. One. Mm -hmm. then all you have to do is learn to take that one voice and you can make it into like six different voices. If you know how to do your highs and lows and add accents and other things. And if you watch, when you watch animation or any kinds of cartoons, um, you'll notice that some people that were famous at the time that were for doing voices, that's exactly what they did. So, um, Let's try, let's see. Um, if you went for like Mel Blanc and you went for, and you listen to Mr. Spacely from the Jetsons or you listen to Yosemite Sam, it's the same voice, except Yosemite Sam has an accent, but otherwise, the exact same voice. Okay. Cool. So, so maybe our, so you're, you take a lot of inspiration from cartoons and different voices that actors, can modify and then use on whether it's, you know, acting or, you know, voice acting. Right. So where do, where do you start? You know, let's say I'm a new ventriloquist. Where do you, where do you start with, like, how do you go from, you know, you're new at this to you have a voice that you can use it with a character? <clears throat> well, are we doing warm ups today before we start sure. or no? Sure, we can do warm ups if you think that's part of the experience and that it helps. Well, I think it helps you know where you are, personally. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> let's try it this way. So we'll go. <clears throat> I'm going to. Do you know how when you, you're doing ventriloquism and you do uh, a voice instead of speaking here, you're, you swallow it and put it back there? Mm -hmm. So that's what I do for my warm up. So I, okay. I, when I hum, when you hum and you go, hmm, I'm going to hum in the front and you can feel it all through here. Hmm. When you hum, you feel it all through the, your passages through here. So now okay. I'm going to move it to the back. So it'll go like this. Listen. Hmm. Uh, hear the difference yeah 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 <clears throat> right Is that it? yeah okay. so now i'm just gonna do the scale i'll do it in one breath here we go mm -hmm. <clears throat> So now I think my throat in my throat and my voice, it feels more open to me when I speak because I haven't talked to anybody today except for you right now. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't have anything to open it up or anything. So 
now I do. And I notice, I personally notice a difference just in the way I sound and I feel, but I don't know, maybe it sounds the same to you. No, that, that's neat though. So you, do you <clears throat> always do this before a show or is it just when you haven't warmed up your voice and you feel like you need to warm it up? That one. I don't always okay, do it, cool. but I, yeah, when I feel like I need to warm it up and sometimes it makes you, it helps you to center to sort of, so you're like, kind of bring your focus in so you could do a show, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they have, they, they now have this warm up that they can, that they know to <clears throat> get their range. Where do you go from with that? You talked about the scale. Do you use that to find a different register for a character voice or well, do you? What did, where did you just, when you did yours, what did you have there? When you went oh. to, Mm, uh, would you have uh, now, talk, uh, now talk with that hi how are you see hi, how you doing? nice to see you oh yeah hi how's it going yeah it's kind of a nice a nicely voice almost yeah yeah it is kind yeah. of good it's there so now uh -huh. you take that voice like that okay now you can move it up and down so uh, if i go higher it'll go from here. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. See, it's a different voice altogether. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. But it's in the same place. Hey. Yeah, you can so, stretch it out. It almost sounds like Jerry Seinfeld. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. So, and you go, so you go higher. You go there. Then you can go down here. It's lower. Then you can go down here. It's really low. That's four right there. It's interesting because you never think about like a nasally voice in a lower register, which is funny too for a character. Yeah, it is. I know, you're kind of a growl kind of guy. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I've never even. Well, that's a if, voice I've never tried. If so, if you so, did so, a uh, hear lower like that, yeah, you could do a guy that's really big, mm -hmm. uh, like if you had a puppet that's fat or large, you could do that, or go the opposite where you have this little tiny character and he's like. Hey, how you doing? You know, and it doesn't look like it should come on, but it's really funny. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do that in cartoons a lot, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Because as in the Bob Clampett line that we I say all the time is, puppets are like cartoon characters that you can touch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. that's true. So what advice... That, you know, this is so neat. What advice do you have to someone that's like, you know, I did that, but my voice still sounds like my own voice? Well, the other one is, is to talk with air. So you're not even using your own voice. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so if you do, uh, did you ever do a seagull? The sound no. of a seagull? No. <clears throat> so it goes like sort of. <laughs> And then if you bring in the ocean, <laughs> okay. So now I'm going for that. That's air going in. Air right, coming so you're in. You're stuck in air, okay? Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> you talk with that. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? Okay. Uh, how are you? Wow, that's really that that's a hard one to do as a control request, let alone it's uh, not it's not when you get used to it. I could do that all day and it seems like, it seems hard, but you're talking with your air. You're not using your air. Wow, that's crazy. I don't isn't it I don't cool? Think a ventriloquist that does that for a voice. No, I don't think anybody does. That's so weird. Oh, it's oh. That's that's weird because it's like you have to pre-plan everything you say so you know how much to. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, you you've got like a, a reserve yeah. there. Wow. Okay. So you have so they well, have like, so air that goes in is all like that, like um, like Bozo. Bozo's voice is like that. Uh huh. What? Well, because now it's your pal Bozo. <laughs> See, but it's still yeah. all air going in. Sure. Sure. So they have they have a general idea for a voice. Um, you well, know, that's one. And then you got your uh, voice. What's right. that? <clears throat> um, it's 
it's sort of like uh let's see let's base it on dudley do right because that's probably the easiest so you're like hello hi it's me dudley do right the canadian mountain reporting for duty sir okay okay so now you got that uh, uh. now you change uh, the pitch uh. you change the pitch of it so now it becomes like marvin the martian Sure. I think people are the most interesting insects on Earth, don't you? Where's my B-52 space modulator? It's lower, but it's the same thing. Ah. No? That makes sense or not? Yeah, that makes sense. Fuck what happened. Oh, you got stuck there, I think. Hold on just a minute. We're back. Okay, I noticed you were like frozen, so yeah. Okay, so on your side. So then there's two voices that you put together. Like some characters have two voices. Did you ever notice that? So, no, I haven't. so like Pee Wee Herman mm -hmm. does two voices. His character has okay. two voices. So one is the uh voice, and the other one is. The regular one, you talk like that, okay? So, so it's like that. Then you go to the other one. Oh, oh, I, oh, I can't believe it! Oh, oh. <laughs> so it's really two voices, not one. Wow. How did? Do, how does? Uh, how have you noticed that he establishes that as one voice, though? Without it seeming like he's jumping from Pee Wee Herman to like a different character. Is it just because that he does it enough where he goes back and forth? Or? Yeah, because he uses the other one as. When he gets excited, he goes to the uh voice. Okay. And then when he talks normal, it's like that. Then, okay, so then you talk, and then you go, Wow, oh, look at that! Oh! <laughs> wow. Okay. Then you go back again, because that's how it is. Sure. So, <laughs> so that's great. Uh, so I'm people taking have my a derby general, I'm getting people have a general idea for what voice, what, what voices they can do now. Um in terms of like, I need, I need a puppet. What, what is your advice to beginners? Mm -hmm. Um, or like, do I, do I need an, ex you know, do I need a puppet? What type of puppet do I need? Do I need to buy the puppet first? What, what's your take on that? Well, it's like, um, I've had people that can do, an they do another voice already. They just need a puppet. Some people are like that. Other people get a puppet when they get it. They, if they feel like this, like you can naturally know, oh, it should sound like this, uh -huh. but it you don't know immediately. Sure. Um, some people do. I do. I mean, I, I can do voices all day. So, so. But you've been at this. If somebody been, says been performing for years, Bob, and you've been doing voices for years, you've been performing and doing voices for years. Yeah. And you study them on a regular basis, so you're yeah. not just you know a run of the mill ventriloquist. <laughs> no. But when I was a kid, when I was a kid, you know, they didn't have, um, they didn't, they didn't have, what are we recording on now on a regular basis and playing it back? We, oh, I guess, uh, YouTube I guess, stream yard. What's that? Stream yard. I guess, I guess you're doing a lot. Like you, yeah, you can record into that and back and hear it back. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, they didn't have that. And, um, before cassette tapes, there were reel-to-reel -reel tapes, and when we were kids. We had those. My parents got those. That's why we, my my brothers my brothers who aren't do don't do what I do can do voices because sure. growing up we used to record <coughs> record television shows and play them back without seeing the people. So we wow. had it. You have it in there already. It's okay. weird. Um, but I remember it, I was like two and I could do, I was doing, I think I was doing Jimmy Durante and I was two years old. I and do. it sounds like, like a kid doing Jimmy Durante. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, because it's higher. But yeah. my mom had a friend, I guess, that she knew forever and ever and came over one day and he had one of those. And it was a big machine. It was like thick and big. I don't even know if they make them anymore. Um, and it had a plastic record on it, like really thin plastic. Mm -hmm. um, a long, long time ago, they used to 
do that kind of stuff like on the back of a cereal box where right. they, they would have recordings and it was they might put it on um the back of it on cardboard to give it more um you know so it wasn't as yeah make it more it, yeah you could put a record needle on it it would be okay but it had it wasn't mm -hmm. as flimsy but sure. that's basically what it was and i remember doing making that and they said he said do do something and i'll record it so i was you know like hi how are you you know and i'm like two and i i that's someplace i don't know where it is but that's interesting because um, um and, and you know to the younger people that are like a, you know a lot younger than you know i don't know that what the typical age is to go through you know vocal changes and all that um don't be afraid to like to keep practicing and to, and to start something because I remember I'll, I'll go back and look at videos of me performing at Vent Haven with the original Mervin where it was the same voice but it, I was younger so it was a lot higher pitched and it was hi I'm Mervin Young and now it's hi I'm Mervin Young and it's changed and you can see yeah, how it's changed over because time. your your own register of your voice yeah. has gotten lower and so that's your regular voice now your right. regular voice has changed so before so your bass voice for him was mm -hmm. different then because that's what your bass voice was it was it was higher it would just exactly you right didn't point. have a choice yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but i was amazed um when i was teaching puppetry with with gwen and siggy and stuff and doing these show these in school shows Share a little bit about to our audience what you did there before you you share this. Kind of what you. Well, they started. We worked for, um, and I think I think Gwen set that up, or it was a thing for PBS. And what it was was a show that um, it was for kids that could write. I mean, actually write stories. Mm -hmm. And so they would send stories in to PBS. And then if they won, uh, their story got to be performed as a puppet show. And it wasn't like one kid wins. It was like 20 kids win. Oh, wow. there stories from all over. Yeah. So you had, uh, had different age groups and different. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so what happened is from doing that. And we did show a show like that too. That I think it actually went on, like a kids' radio thing too. But uh, all the voices and the soundtrack we would record in a studio, and then have it ready to go. And then you just, you know, lip sync the puppets to what you already recorded. You got to sure. remember what you recorded and hear it over and over again. But uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so from doing that. Somebody approached Gwen and and said, um, "They have these sh these schools that you go to that brings in an arts program, and most of the arts programs are. What do you think? What do you think of arts? You think of dance, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe drawing, maybe, but you should yeah. have an art teacher already in a school. So they're sure. bringing in stuff that they don't have, which is dance, singing, maybe, but singing." As a group, like, because uh, most of the people they brought in were <clears throat> um, theater people. So they think all, mm -hmm. um, they think everything is like a musical, <laughs> like their everyday life is like a musical. So you talk and then you sing, you know. Sure. So, um, so and then there's dancer mm -hmm. in that, is in that, or also sometimes it's just working out because uh, a lot of schools now they don't have recess even. So if you yeah. don't have that, you have no exercise. So you need to be someplace where you're doing physical stuff. Sure. <clears throat> okay. So they have that. They have, but they don't have anybody actually doing a show or doing puppets. Right. <clears throat> so they did it and they were, they thought, well, they were ready to do it by themselves. And they said, this is too hard to do by yourself. So they bring me in. And what I do is I come up with, all this other stuff, which is improv, um, and I'm doing voices, and I get people to talk with. I got kids to talk using air, and some kids came up with 
voices that I couldn't even do, but they're so cool. And you're like, man, that's like the greatest voice I ever heard. Wow. Uh, because they're taking them from an, another place and they never tried that before ever. It's kind yeah. of amazing. And all people could do that. Um, Dale Brown, who lives in Wisconsin one day, sent me a guy. He says, Bob, I got a guy up here who wants to be a ventriloquist. He said, but his trouble is he and the dummy sound alike. And I said, okay. So he, they, they sent him to me. And there, and here's his problem. He learned from like the mayor course or whatever. So he uh -huh. he did what they told him to do, which was he ended up with a voice like this. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. You know, kind of like that. But mm -hmm. but the problem was he sounds like that already. <laughs> he, got, he did. He came in and he went, hey, Bob, how you doing? Nice to see you. And I'm like, oh, geez. So I go, <laughs> so what voice are you using? He goes, I'm using this one. He's like, hi, how are you? Okay, how are you? You know what I mean? Oh, it's man. the same thing. Yeah. So. I got him to talk more like Homer Simpson. It was down like that. <laughs> so his, uh, I made him dummy voice lower than his. Oh, you mean the dummy? That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, hi, how you doing today? I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> you know, so it was yeah. really, yeah, it was, that's all he did. I lowered his voice and it, and that was the difference. That's what he needed. Okay. Uh, because, but he didn't realize his own voice where it was. And a lot of people are like that. They go, why can't I do the voices like you can do all these voices? Well, they don't, they have to know where they're starting from. Sure. So what's your voice, your own voice, your own voice. What does that yeah. sound like before you make it into other places? And yeah. I personally, most people do not like their own voice. I don't like mine because it sounds nasal all the time. I think and that's because I, I uh, don't breathe through my nose. I'm, I breathe through my mouth most of the time. So, right, right. My nose well, isn't usually yeah. working. You have a, uh, a DVD that's out. Uh, you have multiple DVDs that it's out. But the one I want to talk about this episode is uh, <clears throat> Bob Rumba's, uh, I believe it's Choices of Voices. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. We'll link it in the description so people can go buy their own copy. That's where I, I took like the scale, like you would on a piano. Yeah. And I, I started in the middle with a voice and then just went up one where I would step to the side. So it could give you like the piano thought in your head. So I would move and this way would be higher and this way would be lower on the other okay. side. So, um, and then it shows you all the registers you could get. And then I did di the Disney characters so that you could start at me like mickey mouse is like really high mm -hmm. and then go through all of them so you have mickey mouse is high goofy is like your dumb voice which a lot of ventriloquists use which is like mortimer and, oh yeah type kind of voices you know right and then um uh then you're in <clears throat> doing uh, a dog because you have pluto in there which is talk with which is again talking with air and mm -hmm. donald duck is talking with air also because it's air and from your cheek and forced out yeah right so that is how many voices right there how many different places is like five and then you throw black pete in which is you putting a gravel in your voice and that's it so the voice that we started out with remember this the yeah ta -da. Like yeah, that one, higher and lower. Now, uh -huh. if you took that same voice right there and okay. you added a gravel to it, listen, so it goes like this. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Okay. That's a completely different voice, but it's the yeah. same. But it's coming from the same place. You're just adding gravel to it. How do you, yeah, you say add gravel. How do they do that? How do you do that? Um, Use this... <laughs> Use the saliva uh, in the back of your throat. Okay. Hey, how are you doing there? Good to see you. Kind of yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ah, sure. Yeah. Right. I'm, 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 I'm talking like it's all easy, but and it actually really is, but most people think it it's just a, takes, this big thing, like, oh, my God. Yeah. But yeah. You gotta, you're just breaking it down in, in, into sections. Of and course. 
And when you break it down into sections, it's like no big shakes, really. What is your favorite voice to do? I don't know if I have a favorite one. Really? No, I don't know if I do anymore. I used to say, oh, I like doing this or that. I, you know, what I usually is my favorite voice is whatever makes everybody else amazed at the voice I'm doing. That's usually the one that's my most favorite. Sure, whatever's like winning at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, right. So. Okay, cool. But the, now the choices of voice, where was that filmed? And you did a lot more than just that in the video. You had people, you know, uh, you had people give, uh, give you uh, their puppets and you gave them voices and did jokes with them and personalities. Well, they yeah, gave me. Nothing. They gave me a voice. You know, a good voice. You have like you can get a good personality out of that too. Yeah, you can. You use the voice, and then in your head, you you come up with all the different places. Like, well, if a guy sounds like that, then what is he really like? And what is he then? So then, in your head, you come up with this background of where what he's like, mm -hmm. and then you have a whole character. Then now you, now you have. A vo you started with a voice, now you added character to it. Now all your material is going to come from that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all built. It's like it all came from one little tiny place, and then it just grew. It, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, but you have to start someplace. Yeah. And, that, and that's the trouble with most people. They go, how do you do voice? Oh, my God. Oh, I can never do that. You know, but you can, but you have to know where to start. Sure, that's well, all. And for, then for, me, the, for me, the first character that I that I ever did made had the voice created before the puppet was Jackie, uh, my jackalope, and uh, yeah, we I was with you when we did all we did all that together. And um, hold on, hold on, hold on. It it just it just zoomed out, and now we're back. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna repeat that so we can. <laughs> All right, sorry. So that reminds me of my character Jackie, where I actually started with the voice first, and then had the puppet created later because the voice had that personality and everything in it. Um, right. And uh, you know, I, I I saw this guy, and I I could do it. I kind of copy his voice. He had a really interesting voice, and and what's interesting is uh, what that you've noticed is that over time performing the character, the voice has has morphed into not just an impression of the guy, but like <clears throat> thing. That's because you sped it up. He right. Was, he was a slower character because mm -hmm. you were basing it on this guy. And when he talks, he talks slow. And sure. then that's not how you are. And in order to be with you and go at a certain rate, you had to go faster. Hey, how are you, Kip? Good to see you. That's that's Bob. It's not Kip. No, it's Bob. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know the difference, though, right, Jackie? I know the difference. Kip does too. Ain't that right, Kip? Yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah it's so really that's what happened. You started slower because the guy, the guy that you took that from, was a bigger guy. He was heavy. Wow, he was guy. a heavy guy, and so as a heavy guy, he talked slower, probably because he was fat and he couldn't he couldn't move quickly, and his voice went with the, with the way he the way he was. His first. voice went with the leap, right? Yes. Yeah. So when you started going faster, then the voice got higher. Mm -hmm when you started going quicker. Sure. Uh, did you notice that? You probably did because you've listened. I, I did because I see I see videos on my social media timeline. They go back for like a year ago when Jack was like, hi, how are you? Good to see you. And it's, it's <laughs> yeah, right. so much. But it's you weren't, but you also weren't used to the voice yet either. So. No, and the, the character yeah. um, evolved with the voice and, and now he's, you know, the, my most rambunctious character. And, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, what's that? You know. And he can he can have he usually has a level to him, and then I can lower that or you know uh, heighten that for him to be you know more energized, right? Or right. completely right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's been great. So, I gotta go find Kip. All right, go find Kip. Where are you, Kip? Okay. <laughs> so, but, so 
what happened was it's like a chameleon. You know how a chameleon changes its colors as yeah its surroundings? So uh, that's what happened to you. All the things that were going on around you um, made you do that because you're trying to adapt to uh -huh. what you to what you personally needed in order for it to work in your surroundings. So in order to work in your surroundings, you had to go faster, and and um, and when you started to go faster, his voice just naturally went up. I didn't and that think doesn't it, always happen, but it does. I didn't did think for about you. that. What's that? I didn't think about that, about how I did all these TikToks with them. And when, you, when you're doing TikToks, you have to go faster. You do have to go faster because they're how many seconds? You, you yeah, have like, seconds. You know, yeah. 15 right. to 30. So, yeah. And now, so you started doing Hank now. Mm -hmm. And Hank, go, his voice changes when you do TikToks because you're trying to go faster. And Yeah. And that's, that's still under development because he's new. Just, yeah, but what I'm saying is it's all it teaches you now how to do things slower in a certain amount of time period without going faster. Right. You could make stuff fit in. You just have to know in your head how you do that. And you can sort of feel it. It's weird. Um, yeah. You can feel your time. And when I was starting out as a comic and going up and doing ventriloquism or whatever, I knew when I was on stage, because uh, I could hit, when, when the light would come on, I would say, they I don't know, they would give people light when they had a couple of minutes left. Uh -huh. I would say, give me the light when I have seven minutes left. And they go, okay. But I, I could feel seven minutes. Like, I knew exactly how, when, from that point, when I saw the light, mm -hmm. I did make stuff fit in and wrap sure. it's, it's weird but it's it's now i don't know why but i could feel seven minutes mm -hmm. i don't know so i think you get like that on tiktok I, i'm starting to get like that like i do stuff and i go okay that was like 15 seconds or mm -hmm. close to it and some when i a lot of times i don't know what you do but when i record now i record a little bit more specifically for the chance of being able to shave it off like take some off when you shorten it oh yeah yeah completely. yeah Be because if you just stop you're screwed you you have to end it right then you mm -hmm. don't have that extra you know and it depends like if i have somebody filming for me a lot of times they don't give it that extra a little bit extra. Like, oh yeah like with my phone if i'm filming on my phone um i have to have uh, <laughs> press go on the on the uh, video recorder, and then I have to wait a few seconds for it to you know start rolling, and then I have to go, and then I have to tell them you know I'm gonna pause here when I'm done and pose, and then leave it on for a few seconds, and then and then end it. That way you have time to go back in the editor and yeah, yeah. So, so I I don't know. I'm not sure. I actually I did one. I stayed up last night and did. Um, a couple. Do you film them? You film them in a batch, right? You do like a bunch at once, or do you just kind of? It depends on how I feel. Like last night, I did two. Yeah. But it was because I was trying to match. Um, I was I was doing the duet thing, mm -hmm. and this and this guy was talking, and he talked most of the time, and it was it had already been duetted. And the girl that he was talking to doesn't say anything. No. Right, right. So he's like, oh, this happened and this happened and blah, blah, blah. So so now you listen to what he says and you go, okay, so I like this part. I could be funny in there. This part is boring. So I could just talk over that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then you just do it. So I... Now I did it as Laurel and Hardy, so now I'm being two people at the same time, and they have a certain meter that they go to. Like you watch them, and I don't think well, a lot of younger people don't like them because they go slower. They're mm -hmm. they just work slower. They just do. They're slower, and they're the same. Well, actually, they started before the Stooges, but 
the Stooges are faster. That's why the Stooges still go well now, even in black and white and everything. Not just because they're physical, or, but all their stuff is quicker, and it, it still stays now. Where if you watch sure. Law and Hardy, I think they're brilliant, and I think they do a great job, but people don't have – everything's faster now, so they're like – Yeah, it's, it's harder to be uh, – still yeah. relate to that. Then you said – you watched yeah. The Honeymooners, which I told you to watch, which was like the mm-hmm. – uh, that that time period which like 50s 60s was just like their Lauren Hardy of that time yeah. period mm-hmm. and you said oh I could take it it was too slow and I'm thinking oh my god but that's faster than Lauren Hardy was but yeah 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 but you was too slow still I, I don't I don't know who we're into now if there are two guys that work together and most of what happened was actually back when comedy was at its peak there were no teams anymore because if you were a comedy team and you worked in a club which is usually what you had to do to get to being on television or whatever if you were a team you got paid as one person it would be two people when you got paid as one guy so so then people go like well I'm going to be by myself because I want to make all the money right yeah you couldn't. You almost couldn't afford to work as two people. So, that, and that's kind of what happened. Well, that's that's crazy. Um, it's it's it's, but it, it's all part of what happens with your surroundings. Like what you people adapted to their surroundings so they can survive. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. What, yeah. So it takes you to certain whatever. Yeah. It, it is interesting. It's not like we're talking now. It's not really funny. But I think if you're watching this, you probably learn something. Yeah, it gives you a different perspective on, on kind of the way things work. Uh, do you have any characters with you today that you could do some voices with? <clears throat> like the same, like a bunch of voices with one guy? Is you, can do whatever. you can If you have different puppets, you can bring them out. Well, I got little Speedy that you made for me. In the other room, I can go get him. That works. Um, and we'll start off with him, and we can talk about where his voice came from to begin sure. with. Okay. No. So Bob is going to go get Little Speedy. Little Speedy is a dog, and uh, I built this character for him. I don't know. I don't know how long. I think it was a little over a year, maybe. I don't know. I was quite a while ago, but yeah, it was still one of my favorite puppet builds to date. Um, because it's cartoony, it's cute, and it just, it looks like something you just want to go and give a big hug to. So uh, it's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Um, the story behind Speedy uh, is going to be neat when Bob comes back to the room for you to hear it, because it's not a typical, you know, you, you go out and you look for a puppet, or you go out and you see a puppet and you buy it. It's a very unique story, and it has a very unique um past to it. So here he is with little Speedy. Now I right. figure out how to get it on camera because who he is. You're bigger. Hmm. I can make you bigger. Wait, hold on. Can you? Maybe. Wider? You have me sideways. I'm not used to being sideways. Oh, I see. That's because the lens is over here. So we can we can see you full layout now, Bob. Yeah. I you might want to get a little bit back so we can see speedy i don't know yeah yeah you could go like this how's that is that better that's good we can but we can you have to hold him up higher so we can see his full face because i think the uh there we go he's got a body too but it's the angling of bob's camera he's like (laughs) this that's why i had it up and down and you wanted it sideways so it would be the same as yours but i usually work with the camera this way mm-hmm. instead of horizontal vertical instead of horizontal because right um i don't know i just got used to that yeah. and i know what's going on but it, i can do it this way too i think so, the problem ahead. is because when you're doing it with a phone camera yeah i have it this way and i i was so i was dumb because that changes everything now if i set him down and i moved my can my camera sideways the other way it would be over here and it would give a whole different angle to how we look. Right. 
and it changes. Well, that's fine. Go ahead and um and kind of share in a, a couple minutes the story behind the puppet because the voice I don't know if the voice changed throughout the story or not, but it's kind of a neat neat blurb. Well, what happened was the voice kind of changed, but I based it basically because everybody thought he should be stupid. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want him to be dumb. And I didn't want him to do exactly what he looked like. So my even one of my own brothers is like, oh, he should sound like this. And everybody was like, oh, hi there. You know, like, yeah, okay. And that fits, but it, it doesn't fit you. No, it doesn't. So I exact I I actually started uh you know cuz I'm from the south and I yeah I'm not yeah I know so I started like that and then it kind of grew from there so yeah uh, yeah no you should really be way back here really I I have a big head yeah you do have a big head anyway um so what happened was he uh, he's based on Pat Buttram mm -hmm. um, from from uh, most people know him from Green Acres. Yes, he'd be like, "Hey, Mister Douglas, there's a few things here I think you might be interested in," and mm -hmm. basically it went from that to this kind of like that there. So it's sort of the same, but it got higher because I went you went faster. Yeah, I did. So I got higher and what else? Um, we well, you know, you can't be slow all the time. Well, I like you because then I could chill, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So basically, I wanted a character so I could talk more and um, then refer back to him every so often. But I got after I thought that I wanted to do that, I would be in situations where we actually would have to have back and forth conversations. I mean, we're forced into those. So right. then you have to go faster. Mm -hmm. um, so now I use them like a chameleon. I use them where, where he, wherever, however it fits. So I can go back and forth or I can just, I can talk and then he can say something every so often. So, well, otherwise you forget on there. Yeah, right. So that's basically it's basically how it is. Plus, I I wanted him to be my dog, like a like a real dog, uh -huh. not a pal next to me. So that changes it too. So you have him in the performance. Do you have him sit on a when you perform with him? Is he on a stand or do you have him sit in your lap or how do you do it? I do it two different ways. I, I, if if I'm in a situation where I can sit on a really high stool like a bar stool, but he's bit so big, he usually ends up being like a big dog, which he what well, I'm little. Yeah, I know you're gonna get bigger. Yeah, right. So what happens is he he'd be down like this. And half of them fits in my lap. Like, do you ever have a big a dog in your lap that's not a lap dog? So half yeah. of them fits in your lap, and the other half hangs off. Hangs off, and that's right. what ha that happens with him. So then I went to a stand, but he doesn't fit on a stand. So I had to get two stands, and then I put a blanket over so it acted like it was one. Then he could lay down on there, and then he's just next to me that way, and he could get up and look around and say whatever and then go back down again. So. Sure, sure. It, and most people don't work like that. So it gave me what I like the most, which is not to be like other people. So, right, so right. I never want to be like anybody else. So Now, you know. You have um, managed to do that. Yeah, I know. Maybe someone that when maybe someone out there is like I have the voice or maybe I just I, I want a character and I'm I'll get the voice later. Um, when you look at the the puppet or the face, like what what are the things you look for to determine the voice to kind of break it down to a very basic um, well, rotation? When you when you look at that DVD of me doing it, 
I can usually come up with a voice like immediately that I would that hits in me, but um, I let other people pick what they thought, and I'm not saying that I'm always right because what fits me goes from what I've seen and what right. other people see is two different things. And I learned a real lot from doing that thing for other people because they came up with voices that I don't think I would have picked. And I had a rabbit puppet and it was big. Um, Jet made it and it was really big. And it was so big. Um, I tried to get Lee Cornell to buy it and he's sorry that he didn't because he's so big. It, and the ra- It had big ears though. Like it had a big head. And it, big yeah, it had a big head. The ears oh. were giant and he's over six feet. Like um, he has lots of pictures taken with people where they just cut off the top of his head. You know what I mean? Because, and he used to do that with people as a joke because he's so tall. Um, but the rabbit with him was great because it looked the size proportion to him, his right. size, you know. But I had him, I don't remember the original voice I did. I thought he was wacky, kind of, because his eyes were like, oh, I think I might have used the, um, the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Now there's people always think of the white rabbit, but I'm talking about the March hare, the one that's yeah. with um, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter, yeah. So, um, so I did that voice. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Oh boy, everything's like that. You know, so right, right. Um, and that's based on Jerry Colonna, who talked like that anyway. Good, kids, let's celebrate. It's all like that. It's all great. So, um, and they said, somebody said they wanted him to be French. And when I made him French and he had a French accent, that was a whole different deal. And it was actually funnier. But it doesn't oh, really? really, but it didn't really fit. Like, mm-hmm. he doesn't look like that. But when you make him like a fast French rabbit, I, I, it's probably because it doesn't fit it. It's funny. So, fun, sure. Yeah. And a lot of times that's the deal. Can you just lie down just for a little? Yeah, I can't sing me then. <laughs> I have to be seen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if he's any closer, I'll lick the camera. You got to be careful, Bob. Yeah, you got to get back here. There you go. Now, you, look, they can see. You can lay down. Look. Not really. <laughs> they can't really. All right, look here. I'll hold you here. How's that? Is that better? I like it better. <laughs> okay. You smell what? good. You took a bath today. Thank you. This is fascinating. Um, you know, we have our <laughs> ventriloquist. <laughs> we have our ventriloquist convention every year. Um, and you know, they've got two dealers' rooms stocked full of puppets. Um yeah. what's your advice to someone who's jumpy to buy a puppet? I don't I, most people don't think it through. They just buy the puppet. They don't think what they're going to do with it or anything. Uh-huh. They just go, "Oh, I like this," and they buy it. And right. and then they don't, and then they don't know what it should sound like. That's why I actually there would love to have a, a class every year, like like one thing where every, like further on down the line where it gave people a chance to buy puppets. And then just bring them in there and I do voices with people. I would love to do that, but they, they never, they won't give that to me. So, Mm -hmm. um, they don't like having the same person all the time, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, do do you think that, um, I mean, you know, from my standpoint, you know, you pick up a puppet, you might think it's cool, but you should be able to connect with it before you buy it. Right. Because like, it seems like today, you know, we, we've got like the best puppet builders. We've got the most creativity, uh, yeah, we do. Creativity. Yeah. It Puppets like- are way beyond a sock puppet. I mean, oh, yeah. even they can get a lot out of a sock puppet. They're yeah, not well, there you know, anymore. And it's like, do you buy something because it looks amazing and cool, or do you buy something that you can use it? And that's what classifies you between a performer and a uh, collector. Right. right? Yeah. So, you know, for, in my perspective, you should be able to pick up something and, and immediately have ideas and, and um you, you should, know but and if you don't you, you really shouldn't buy that puppet 
No, you shouldn't. And if you don't have a voice or ideas or, and then there's some people that are like, oh, well, I'm going to buy this puppet. And then they justify it. And they're like, I'm going to do shows with it and this and that. And then it's like for sale on, you know, on their table that they rent at convention next year because they have to sell all the puppets that they weren't able to come up with. Right. Yes. So oh. there's what, who did, um, I can't remember my kid's name. He, he bought, he bought Elvis. He bought the fat Elvis. And it was funny. Um, I think uh -huh. Axel makes that. Um, anyway, he bought it, and he's kind of fat himself and a big guy. But after he bought it, he realized, "Why well, don't do Elvis's voice? And why would you buy that?" Yeah, you know. And if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, and you're gonna you don't do Elvis's mm -hmm. voice, come yeah. up, figure a way around it. Maybe he's a failed Elvis impersonator who like couldn't do the voice, but he could do you know, whatever. Yeah, um, but he, but they didn't do that. So then he yeah. he had he had it and sold it. He didn't even make it through it to the next year. He sold it online. I mean, almost the media. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, I well, don't. You know, so the, I actually the best ones were the ones that I had a character already done. I was looking for something to fit it. Like I already had a voice and everything ready, but it needed to be in something. Right, because it's already established, and I think I think the bet one of the best ones was um, Randolph, the alcoholic reindeer that I have. So mm -hmm. he, um, I was in a burlesque show, comedy burlesque, which is like vaudeville, like back in the day, but it was like a little racier. That's why they call it burlesque. So there's no strippers or anything in it, which is what right. people think of burlesque now, but. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was, you know, just um, it wasn't completely clean. It's a sort of edgy a little bit, like on the line. There's no swearing still, but it still could be racy. And um, I played a drunk. I got written up in a paper for being like the best drunk. Um, they interviewed me and stuff as a drunk. I mean, I, I, I got nice to see it. And then I just took that same character because I was already doing it. Right. I had been that character. Then I just transferred it to the puppet. Yeah. It's already established. So you just need to, it's, it's almost like that, like those stories where the guy dies and he comes back and goes into some other body. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. God, like, God. I'm still that guy. They're like, you are that guy, but you don't look the same. You know, that's. Yeah. It's sort of like that idea. Well, You're fantastic today. You're really panting. Yeah, he's panting a he's panting a lot, Bob. You should give yeah. Some Poor guy. Yeah. Here, all right. You'll be. Well, <laughs> anyway. wrapping up here, people can check out your DVD choices of voices in a link below. We'll link it up, and uh, that's a that's a great. It's entertaining and it's informative and it's a steal for the price that it is. People should really buy them a copy. I have a copy uh, that I got you to sign at uh, convention, which is great. And uh, and yeah, we've got a uh, we've got a workshop this year, which is very exciting. Yeah, ours is very different though because I don't think two people have ever done that before. But Lynn and I talk so much about each other with each other that we ended up being like, okay, what if I I have a puppet that does this? What if I do that? And then he makes them, and I yeah. get voices. I mean, it's kind of like um, what I just said. Like, I can do the voices and the characters, but I need some place to put them. He can build those places to put them. So, yes, yeah, so what we're doing for this year's convention, uh, hoping that everything's still on and is uh, as of now, I think um, so. is that uh, we have created a, a bunch of character ideas uh, that we'll be, I'll be personally building. And uh, we'll be for sale at the convention, but we will be performing with them and, and teaching with them, using them as tools in our workshop from um, uh, character uh, character creating, character creation from puppet to personality. So, yeah. Very can I be there for that? Yeah, you can be if you don't sweat too much. <laughs> well, that comes from my tongue. You know, this suit is, is water repellent, is it not? Yeah, that's a big word for you, repellent. Did you move your lips? I probably did, but that's a big word. 
I don't know how I knew that word. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right. Anyway, so. Thanks for bringing little Speedy out. Yeah, he has. Re I really like him a lot. He's become where I thought he would end up being, too. And that's mm -hmm. not just because you made him. I, I had that vision of what I wanted, and you made it for me. So, sure. Um, yeah, he's there, but I had a place, I had a little place for him already in my head. So, yeah. and you're working it's, on it's, another it's, dog. It's, 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 now. Everything just clicks with the character. I think yeah. it does. I think he's and, just you know, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I want to give you props because we're, this, we're doing this to talk about voices. Um, the new character I introduced, Hankenstein, who's my Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein monster type character. Um, I was going to do, I'll admit this, I'm, you know, I was going to do the typical, da, 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 the, the, like, Mortimer voice. Oh, with yeah, Don, baby. Yeah, Donna does the Mortimer voice with uh, Bubba J, you know, and it's, it's a common voice. Um, and then you're like, well, what if, what if you did a different voice? And you gave me the idea to do uh, Patrick Warburton. Yeah. And which is great. And what, what happens is, because he plays a lot of people that are supposed to be dumb. But they're not really dumb, not really, yeah. and, and and so that and he's kind of like that now too, where he he's knows things, but he seems like he's kind of dumb, but he's not. He still knows things, and that way I kind of like that better because the other way, it's sort of one dimensional. This way you have a way to go with it. You have different way. Yeah, you can have him be smart at times, but then screw up, and it's okay because he that's in his character. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a lot of testing things going back and forth. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, but that that's fine too because you know you see my face vote. You know, change as I do the voice, and that that's hard when you you practice it and then you get that down. And then to do it as a ventriloquist, I have to like make sure that I'm not making that face that I used to make when I was doing the voice and doing the voice for the puppet. Well, um, I give that guy a lot of credit for his existence because. If you look at him, he's not a bad looking guy. Right. He, he isn't. He's not ugly. He's not, you know what I mean? He's a pretty good looking guy. Yeah. And then he ends up getting all this work playing something who's big because he's tall, a big, stupid guy. Yeah. But he's not, so he doesn't, since he's good looking, he doesn't be totally stupid. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's yeah, kind it's of an very, amazing very, thing. Yeah, it's a very different angle. Yeah, it is. So he gets yeah. a lot of, and I think he gets more work because of that, because the other way they think of you one way and then they, they, they think of him and they go, you know, I wonder if he could do that or not. They, they give him chances anyway, that mm -hmm. uh, if you would have, if it would have gone the other way, I don't think he would have gotten in show business. Yeah. So I think you're completely right. Yeah. Fantastic. Where can people that's find what happens people? for us? We're, we're doing that same thing. We're giving them the chance to be something more than just locked in. So we don't have to feel like, well, I can't do anything else with that. Like, that's all it is. Of course. So yeah. that our lecture this year is at the International Van Haven Ventriloquist Convention. And where, where can people go to find out more about that and become a part of it and be at our lecture? They come to, they go to venhaven.com, I think, can't right. they? Or they can go to uh, Ventriloquist. Yeah. Is there a ventriloquist convention site too? I think there's one of those. Benhavenconvention.com. I think it's something like that. Yeah, Benhavenconvention.com is like that too. Because yep. um, that has to do with the vent ventriloquist museum. And you know what? A lot of people won't go to that that are puppeteers. They won't go to it because they think, well, I'm not a ventriloquist. But you don't have to be. You can do no, the voice. You can do different honest. voices. And, and then pick up a puppet there too. You can get yeah. a lot out of it. And it's not like going to a lot of other conventions where people are, can be very snobby and stuff. You find out that a lot of people, they like each other a lot. They become friends. And a lot of us just go because we know people there. We want to see them. Yeah. You know, you get to be like a family almost. Yeah, it becomes like a, a family reunion. And it's, uh, you know. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So people can find you on social media. Uh, TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. And Facebook. Where? What's your tag? Bob Rumba. <laughs> Bob, okay, cool. So is Bob, it like... B-O-B-R-U-M-B-A. Yeah, you could usually find me. 
somewhere somewhere Bob Rama, fantastic and you guys have made land inventing on all social all socials um and we'll have uh, our lecture this year at the convention the killer um so be there say hi to us take photos and uh, learn some stuff from our yeah lecture. we would like to see you yes so, so check that out uh, at havenconvention.com something like that a vh yeah. convention i don't know what it's called you, you'll you'll find it look it up um and yeah and i hope this helps you guys with voices um, our lecture is going to cover a lot more than this that we were able to cover in this hour. It's going to engulf, oh my gosh, from, you know, puppet to personality, really, the, the whole step. Yeah, we're going to go faster. We're sort of just talking here. and we're, yeah, we're, just we're, 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 we're trying to give you stuff that we probably won't put in there, too, like basic stuff, because a lot of people there already know things. But we gave you basics yeah. so that you would have something to, for the people that are like, like lost voice orphans or whatever <laughs> out the storm. So, exactly. yeah. Anyway. Thank you. I need to be coddled. Yeah. Where did you come up with that word? I don't know. All right. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting on my hat. We're going. All right. Well, you guys right. take care. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I'll see you at convention. Me too. Yeah, you too. Bye. See ya.